President Ronald Reagan once said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. I'm Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council. In our nation's capital, a decision is about to be made that will cut to the very heart of our republic. In June, the Supreme Court will rule on the issue of same-sex marriage. The issue is already made for an intense debate across our country. But let's take a few moments to seek the truth about what's really at stake. Throughout the country, the majority of Americans continue to believe that marriage should be between one man and one woman, and even more believe that the Supreme Court should not force all 50 states to redefine marriage. But maybe most importantly is the fact that 81% of Americans believe the government should leave people free to follow their beliefs as they live their daily lives at work and in the way they run their businesses. What's happening, though, is quite the opposite. A gal and her mom came in, they sat down, and just like every other time, I said, okay, what's the wedding date? He asked the bride and, and Gruden's name. She kind of giggled, said it's two brides. I was actually very apologetic. I said, I'm really sorry. Um, I think I wasted your time. We don't do cakes for same-sex ceremonies. Rob has been a customer of ours for a long time, and we had a good relationship, and we were chit-chatting, and he says, oh, I'm going to get married. And uh, I just grabbed his hand and said, I'm sorry, Rob, I can't do your flowers because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. The state of Oregon says a Gresham bakery broke the law when it refused to bake a wedding cake for a couple because that couple is gay. Wedding photographers, florists, bakers, and caterers are increasingly being punished by the government. Crushing fines threaten to run them out of business, and in some cases, they face the possibility of losing their homes all for simply following their biblical convictions on the definition of marriage. I don't think the founders could have ever conceived the time when someone was told, you can't practice your trade, you can't engage in business if somehow the government doesn't like what you think and doesn't accept your particular faith point of view. The central question becomes whether these choices are legitimate expressions of what it means to be an American which is to have the freedom to live according to one's beliefs. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Or whether these sorts of choices are the antithesis of what it means to be an American. In 2015, is it possible for well-intentioned Americans to legitimately exercise their faith and religious freedoms in a way that also shows love and respect for all people? Is standing for biblical truth at odds with the biblical commandment to love our neighbor? Or do they flow together? Indeed, in almost every one of those instances, the provider of those services had happily served homosexual clientele, often for years. Baronel has been serving one of the plaintiffs in this case for nine years, knowing fully well that he, he identified it as homosexual. It didn't matter to her. But when it comes to engaging in something as sacred as a marriage ceremony, that's different. I mean, if Rob walked in my door today, I'd give him a hug and sell him flowers. I'm not a hater. I, I love everybody, and I love gay people. I've had gay friends. I don't hate them. It's not about that. Beyond the marriage issue, if we're even peripherally aware of what's happening across America, we know that the landscape of religious liberty is changing every day. Whether it's in business, or in the military, or in our schools, and now on the doorsteps of our churches, religious freedom is increasingly taking a back seat to a government-mandated, politically correct way of thinking that marginalizes the freedoms of individual Americans of all faiths. With the Supreme Court about to rule on same-sex marriage, it's time that Americans take a stand here for the religious freedom that's at the heart of both the founding of this country and what should be a truly good and free America today. It's talking about a wall of separation so the state could not tell people of faith how to live their lives. It's time for Americans to become increasingly aware of what's happening with their religious freedoms. If you believe in America, if you care about the liberties we've had in America, you need to understand what they are. You need to understand what they are not. It's very fragile and it will go away if we do not attend to the threats to religious freedom right now. You know, Jefferson said, a free people must be an educated people. People need to learn about their rights, learn where their rights come from, 
learn that religious freedom is not granted by government and therefore can't be taken away by government. And it's time to engage. We must begin by humbling ourselves before the Lord in repentant prayer. It's time to gather in homes, in small groups, in churches, wherever we can, to better understand the importance of rallying now to preserve religious liberty, the foundation for all of our freedoms. Today, you can take a critical first step in getting engaged. I encourage you to view One Generation Away, an award-winning film that spells out in clear detail the issue of religious liberty in America today. We're making three copies of this captivating DVD available for a donation of $20, which will in part be used to further the defense of religious liberty on numerous fronts. Arm yourself by viewing this outstanding film. Then be salt and light by circulating the extra copies and discussing this topic at home, at work, and among your friends. It is up to all of us to keep America free for future generations to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you join us today? Please make your stand for marriage. Make your stand for religious liberty. Let us all stand today for the truth. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free.